So developer edition is the one that uh, you're going to create because this is uh, free and uh, this is meant for learning. Okay. Uh, now the next thing that we need to understand is for how many days is it free? So it's free forever. You don't need to, uh, and it does not expire also. The good thing is that this developer edition does not expire. It will not expire if you do not keep it ID for six months. If you don't log in for six months, then it will expire. Otherwise, if you keep on using it, then it does not expire. So that's a good thing. <laughs> so especially for the, you know someone like uh, Arvin, uh, you know you might uh, require uh, to work on this uh, developer edition for a longer time, right? Three, four months, because you know uh, right. the different training that you do and uh, the, it's always good to you know do uh, all the um, what is it uh, all the learning or all your projects or all your experiments on the same edition so that uh, you can actually relate one thing with the other thing. So everything really you know uh, you practice related to admin and then to related to the development or then to the sales cloud the service cloud everything on the same environment right <clears throat> sure so uh, this does not expire again as i told you if you could just keep it ID for six months then it only it expires uh, now what on features do we get with it it has features similar to enterprise edition which means uh, we can almost do everything on a developer edition. All right. Now the next question that comes into mind that if a developer edition is free and it has all the features of an enterprise edition or almost all the features, then why uh, would someone actually go and buy an enterprise edition and why will not they start using developer edition only? Can you just think of what may be the difference between a developer edition and enterprise edition? Feature wise, uh, you know, almost same. I would assume that the end user of options might not be there available in the developer edition. Yeah. <clears throat> Number of users uh, is just two. In developer edition, you can just have two, uh, you know, uh, Salesforce users. So that's one challenge. Okay. There's one more. Can you think of one more? Amount of data that you can store would be limited. That's also correct. I give you five MB. I understand what how much five MB is, right? So almost nothing. It just gives maybe you. one song. <laughs> yeah, one song, and uh, you know because we are not uh, storing songs here, so uh, and we are storing data, so we can store a little more uh, because uh, the tables can uh, accommodate. Uh, Tables basically need very less data, but still, uh, you know, if you're talking about records uh, in the data tables, uh, you can have, uh, let's say, 150 or 200 records. Right. Which means, uh, you know, if you have 200 contacts, uh, you can actually manage with the uh, developer edition. If you, you know, the scope of your uh, CRM is just 200 contacts and their phone numbers, you can be very happily managing it with the uh, developer edition also but 200 is very less right so that's it it's 2 to 300 that's it okay fine <clears throat> so uh, that's about our uh, you know uh, the data storage and uh, number of users limitations that we have on the developer edition right uh, and there is one more feature which is not actually available in a developer edition which is called a sandbox Sandbox is basically, uh, you know, I'll talk about Sandbox uh, you know, a little later uh, after a few days, but just to give you an idea, Sandbox is, uh, you know, primarily uh, a separate environment, a test and development environment where a company can uh, do their, you know, project testing and the development and everything. And once they find that whatever they have done is okay, then they deploy it. Got it? So that's what a sandbox is. So developer edition does not have a sandbox, whereas your enterprise edition will have a sandbox. So practically, uh, the companies uh, which are actually doing development, they need a sandbox environment. They cannot uh, do their development stuff in the production environment. So that's how it is. 
centros. Okay, so these are the you know the basic differences. Apart from this, again, you know, there are a few limitations which are there and also uh, that we are not getting into right now. But more or less, these are the primary differences because, uh, you know, uh, developer edition is meant only for people to learn and not for people to start using it uh, for the professional uh, the CRM. So that's the reason why they have put these limitations on the developer edition. Let's create our own developer edition. Uh, create our own developer edition. Ashok, you said you already have a developer edition, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Arvind, how about you? You have already have a developer edition? Uh, it's been some time I've created, so I don't know if it's active or not. I created when Asha started hers, and I didn't do anything else after that. So. You remember the password and all? Probably, I can give it a try. Okay. Uh, or, or, or what you can do is, uh, is it the same one that uh, Asha used to have? Or she used to use? No, it's a different one. Okay. Uh, so you can, you know, after the session, you can just uh, go back and uh, check it if it's uh, active or not. Or in case you need to create, you can just go to developer.salesforce.com and create it. Okay. Uh, developer.salesforce.com slash sign up. Got it. So that's it. All right. in one minute.
Got it. So here it is. Um, now let me just quickly introduce uh, this uh, interface to you. Here at the top right corner is the application drop down. So all your apps will be listed here. All the apps. Okay. Uh, you can have multiple apps within your Salesforce org and all the apps will be listed here. All right. The standard ones, the custom ones. Custom means the ones that you create, everything will be listed here. Right. Then is the help link. This takes you to the help menu. Then is the setup link. It opens up the setup menu in the left hand side. Right now it's already open. You can see the sidebar. Okay. Then comes your uh, you just can click on your name and from here you can log out, you can go to your own profile, you can do, go to my settings. From my settings you can change your uh, login ID, password, email ID, these things. And you can go to developer console. Developer console is another uh, user interface where you can write the programs. So there's something which we don't need right now. But uh, you can actually go to a developer console from here. If you click on this. You see another console opens which is for meant for developers. This is where the programming and all that stuff is written. So let's close this. Left hand side, this entire menu is the setup menu. Setup menu means anything that needs to be done on the setup side uh, needs to be done from here. Anything that you want to do. You want to add users, you want to remove users, you want to automate something, you want to create a page, you want to write a program. Everything has to be done from the setup menu. Alright, so the setup menu is meant for doing all the changes. Okay. Who, uh, you want to control the permissions of the users, you want to uh, design your email templates, you want to uh, monitor some uh, task whether that has been completed or not completed, is it still pending translate something into a different language everything is here in the uh, setup menu okay so applications are listed here help menu setup menu and your my settings only if you want to change your own uh, your name and uh, login information you can just go to my settings from my settings you can actually go to personal and from here you can actually go to all the uh, personal information or change password and you change your password. Correct. And this is the kind of user interface that every user who logs in into Salesforce gets to see. So it's not different for developer edition and separate for an enterprise edition. It's the same kind of a user interface that everyone gets to see. Alright. So that's how it is. Now the next thing that we have to do is understand these tabs. Okay, uh, this is the tab panel, and all these are tabs. What is a tab? Tab is basically a button which connects you to the database. All right. Before we start talking about tab, I just want you to understand another thing. Does anyone know what's an MVC framework? Have you heard of MVC framework? No, I haven't. Ashok? Yeah. Or model view controller. Model view controller. What does that mean? Model view controller. Ashok? The application, the database, and the, the user interface. Okay. Controller, the yeah. database. Yeah. View is the user interface. And model is okay. Uh, see, first thing, this MVC is a framework. All right. Now, what is that framework? Framework is the 
basic framework is basically the structure of an application okay. so this is a framework using which applications can be developed okay so what kind of a framework it is it is a framework with three layers right three layers model view and controller okay so which, what are these three layers model is database view is user interface controller is controlling logic so any uh, application that has a user interface as well as a database in the back end and there is some logic written logic has to be there some controlling logic has to be there uh, that kind of application falls under mvc framework okay for an example if you go to any uh, a portal job portal what do we see in the front end we get to see the list of jobs right so uh, that's a user interface in the back end they have a database where all the jobs are stored right and in the uh, you know there are some controlling logics which are written which are not visible but they are written which actually control uh, what data will be displayed and what happens when a user clicks on a button and everything right so that's mvc framework you take any job portal or any other portal uh, web based portal there is an interface there is the back end database and there is a set of controlling logic you talk about facebook.com what is facebook it's also built on mvc framework it has a database in the back end facebook is connected to a database or not what do you think is it only the interface that we get to see or is it connected to some database in the back end what do you think that's connected connected right otherwise how does it yeah. fetch all that information you know what my friend is doing and all that stuff that's not just on the interface that's actually in the database and that's being displayed on the interface right so on my wall it will only show me uh, my friends update it will not show me you know someone uh, update who i do not know so there must be some logic which is working so there is the interface there is the back end database and there is the set of controlling logic that's how it is all right so any uh, you know uh, application which has an interface database and controlling logic is meant uh, you know is an mvc framework application all right so it's just a framework it's not a technology now you can build it using whatever technology so this mvc framework application can be developed using asp.net uh, they can be developed using php they can be developed using uh, maybe something like an html only uh, with a you know bit of javascript so that's how it is okay so salesforce is also uh, built you uh, you know the, on mvc framework it has three layers one is the database in the back end one is the user interface and one is a set of controlling logic okay so what we just saw is user, user interface what you see here is the user interface but there is a back end database also okay and database means tables data tables so right? collection of database data tables each of these tab is connected to a database table in the back end fine makes sense each of these tab, uh, tab is connected to the each of these tab is connected to the uh, to a table in the back end all right like campaigns okay this is a tab which will connect me to the table which uh, where i can store the campaigns if you click on this you can see the campaigns existing campaigns you just want to show uh, see all active campaigns you can click on this okay and you can also uh, click on new campaign to create a campaign right so basically you are uh, this tab is connecting you to the campaigns uh, object or table right the same way account will connect you to the accounts database table in the back the same way contacts is connected to the contact database table clear yep okay so 
so that's how it is so we have the tabs we have the database table in the back end the controlling logics keep on working uh, that's there and we have the user interface all right and the next thing that we'll have to do is we just need to understand these basic tabs okay, so first thing i will just you know uh, take you through this uh, list of basic tabs and understand the basic sales application that sales process before that just a small thing uh, you see this app these apps here right an app is collection of tabs what is an app it is just a collection of tabs So uh, if I change it from this app to some other tab, uh, app like from sales, if you change it to marketing, you will see the tabs have also changed. See now it's just campaign leads, contacts, opportunity report. Account is not there, right? To make it sales, you will see account, opportunity, forecast, contracts, orders, everything is there. If you make it community you will see some other tabs okay so an app is just a you know collection of tabs that's how simple an app is okay so with, you know when you select a different app you get to see different set of tabs that's how it is got it okay now let's actually go and uh, start understanding the sales app, the basic sales app. So these are the uh, you know, apps which have been provided by Salesforce, and uh, these are the default ones. Uh, you know, in addition to this, if you are using uh, an enterprise edition, you can create your own apps also. That's what we have already talked. So uh, let's understand this basic sales app. To understand this, we'll take the help of a small case study, and uh, do that. Give me a minute. Because most of the times you will be working on the standard sales app, and uh, for at least for the sales uh, purpose, we do not uh, create a new app. Very rare situation that some company will actually create a new app for the sales uh, process also. Because Salesforce already has you know provided a sales app, and most of the companies uh, use Salesforce for the sales app. So I wanted to understand the basics of the sales app uh, which we have here. Okay, so to understand this, we'll just you know do a small activity. Okay, we'll just do a small activity to understand this sales app. Here is a small case study. Can you just uh, quickly read this and let me know once you're done? Just read it. Done, Ashok, you are also done. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, so, one of you please explain me what, what exactly you understand from this. 
what needs to be done. In so basically, suppose to propose a, a model or a process where you can market that product which is a laptop and then sell sell those as well. Right. Okay. So basically, uh, we have to propose this process what we are going to follow uh, to sell the laptops. Okay. So this is just you know a simple uh, scenario which I want to take uh, so that uh, you can actually understand the sales process a little better. So you have to do this. Um, it's a small activity. Um, you just need to think as if you are the person who will need to decide the process. Okay. I have told you to decide the process and I have to given the situation that there is a new company. They have never ever sold laptops. So there is no scope that I can sell it to my you know existing clients and all that stuff. That's not there. You have to mm -hmm. start searching new clients and you have to send sell it to them. Uh, laptop manufacturing is already done. So again, we don't have to think on how manufacturing will be done and all that stuff. So leave it. So only thing is laptops are ready. You have the stock. You have to sell it and you can actually you know uh, take a location also you know, if you want you can just you know decide on a certain location okay maybe uh, you just have to sell it in uh, San Francisco that's it okay that's that's uh, the scope of location let's say now what will be your approach what what will you do first and then what will you do next that's what I want to understand right so uh, you know I just want you to open a notepad and list down these steps okay and for doing the same thing, uh, you just will just have you know uh, 10 minutes, right? Uh, yes. So we'll spend 10 minutes on this. Uh, time starts now. Just list down. That firstly, I'll do this. Then I'll do this. Then I'll do this. Okay. All right. And please write it on the notepad. Just don't think because uh, you need to share that notepad uh, content with me.
Instagram ready whenever you are. Alright. Or you are still writing? Yeah, done. Okay. Fine. Uh, let me just just open the notepad on your screen. Uh, I'll just make you presenter one by one. Just to have an initial idea of uh, what you have to do. Ashok, uh, I'll just share your screen once. So now we are going to work on the same activity as a team. Right? So you have written your own point. Let's you know, uh, discuss on it as a team. And if you understand the sales process, you will understand that application very clearly. Okay. So uh, what is the first thing that you guys are going to do? In this, uh, this. What's your first step? Advertise. So, when I ask you first step, you both need to tell me your first step. Yeah. Advertise? Yeah, I'll send it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll send email advertisements of the laptop to all the users. Okay. So, uh, what kind of advertisement are we going to do? It would be a multi-channel. Through emails and? Yeah, email, uh, Google Ads. Flyers, maybe business expos, whatever it would be. Okay. Uh, here is uh, it is. So anything, you know, any sales process which needs to be started because uh, you know uh, you do not uh, just uh, start getting your customers to buy your product till that time. You them know that you are selling something, right? So there is advertisement which is required. The first step that you see here. The campaign step is basically meant for storing all your advertisements and uh, you know kind of uh, campaigns that you're doing. Okay, so that's what it is. All the campaigns or the marketing activities that you do will get stored here in the campaigns. Right. Next, what is the step? What is the next? Uh, step? Advertise then would be your know, scope out to who you who responds to your advertisements. Uh, okay. Shortlist the companies who responded. Uh, Ashok, what's your next step? Uh, provide them some special offers initially to attract them to buy the product. Yeah, but again, that uh, providing a special offer is how. I mean, again, you are sending an email for that. Yes, I mean and in that's the, also the campaign. Right? Yeah. So we, now let's come out of the campaign. What will be the next step? 
they are collect the information of the people who are interested. Yes. So find how do you find people who are interested who are responded. So basically we are coming to the same thing. All right. So once you have advertised, uh, after that uh, you would need to you know track all the people who have shown interest after the advertisement. Looking into your advertisement or maybe after reading your email or uh, looking into your uh, some uh, what do you call it? some website or promotion, right? Whatever, whatever is the means of advertisement. The next thing is you need to start tracking the interested people or people who responded. Absolutely correct. These are the people who will get tracked in the leads object. Leads is where you track all these people for shown interest. Right? What is the next thing that you are going to do? Uh, talk to them or contact them. Talk to them. Um, Ashok, I think you also said the same thing. Yeah, all are, uh, contact yeah, all are interested. Right? Yeah. Now, to contact these yeah. people, what we need is, uh, we you need to store information of uh, you know uh, the people who work for that particular company, right? Because we are selling it to corporates, we are not selling it to individuals. So you might have right. to talk to you might need to talk to multiple people, right? Let's say uh, you know when I promote. Uh, my laptops there's a certain person xyz who actually you know or sends me an email and says that i'm interested or our company is interested when i call that person he says that see our company is interested but i am not the decision maker so if you want to sell it you will have to talk to these people there's a possibility right this is how it works so i need yep. to yep. multiple purchasing uh, team or a sourcing team yeah purchasing team and then there is you know there the other teams uh, or or there, there can be a different decision maker maybe, right? And I might need to talk to all of them. So then what we need to do is the company information will go into the accounts and all the individuals uh, whose information I'm storing will go into the contacts. Got it? So let's say if I got an inquiry from uh, IBM. So IBM is going to be my account. So I'll put IBM's information in the account and people who I need to talk to, those should get added as contacts for the same account, all right? So, Jeet, one quick question. Hmm? Uh, when, when we go into these tabs, are they interconnected? Yes. Account and okay. contact are interconnected. Like campaign and lead is a contact or an account go back to leads or contacts? No. Campaign and lead are connected. Account and contact are connected. So wherever but leads and accounts are not connected. Lead and account are not connected. No. Okay. Fine. So you will first of all create campaigns and then you will need to track which lead came from which campaign. So you can actually do that connection. Like once you see some lead, uh, you know, is actually interested, then you will need to create an account of uh, you know with the using the company name and you need to add all the contacts under the contacts table. That's how it is. Okay, so so far we have uh, talked about uh, storing information of the company and the individuals in that company, right? Mm -hmm. Now, where will you track the deal information? You're tracking information about IBM, you're tracking, uh, you know, tracking information about people who you need to talk to in IBM. But you know, you also will be interested in knowing what exactly they are planning to buy, when are they planning to buy, what kind of a budget they have, correct? Right. That information goes into an opportunity. All right. So if you are talking to a client, the client will tell you that we are planning to buy approximately 500 laptops by uh, the end of this year, uh, December 2015. We are planning to buy. Now this information also needs to be stored somewhere, right? So that I, you can actually start uh, planning your sales pitches according to that. Every time you call the customer, you cannot tell him that, uh, hey, can you please tell me what we are exactly you are planning to buy. You cannot do that, right? So that information goes into opportunities. All right. Uh, so uh, what is the next thing that you uh, will do? Talk to them. So after talking to them, you will just come up with the account, contact, opportunity. Okay. What's your next step? Pricing. 
pricing uh, let's say we have already set up the pricing and all before selling we have already set the pricing are we talking about negotiations okay yeah pricing then would be negotiation yeah so all these things. Uh, you I'm know, assuming that opportunities already covers yes. what specifications they need and what are the products they need and services, yes. right? All these things will be covered inside the opportunity. So opportunity will take care of what kind of a pricing they are looking for, what pricing you have given, and all. all right? Okay. Okay. Uh, now, what is the next thing? Let's say opportunity takes care uh, of the time the deal is through. Then what? Order what being okay. placed. Sorry. Order, order being placed. Uh, Ashok, what will be your thing? Yeah, order, taking the order and delivery methods. Okay. So, there will be order. So, here we have, uh, you know, one, uh, so forecast, report and dashboard. These three things we are not talking uh, right now. These are, you know, more related to doing the reporting stuff. So just uh, let's not get into the forecast report and dashboard now. Okay. So after opportunity, here we have an option. Order, you are talking about, so order is pretty simple. All your orders will be tracked here that you yourself attend. Uh, before orders, in this app, there is another uh, tab which can track all the contracts. Okay. So uh, an agreement which is actually, you know, uh, between you and uh, your client. Okay, just give me one second. Hello. Hello. Yep, sorry. So, <clears throat> contracts is where you can actually track all the agreements that you have with the client, right? And orders will be tracked in this order step. Okay. What will be the next step? So, let's say step four is, you know, uh, signing up the contracts with the client and then uh, taking the order. What will be step 5? What will be your next step? Delivery. Okay. Delivery. Deliver it. Fine. And delivering delivery is... Delivery like is whatever it might be. I'm oh, sorry? No, I was saying delivery slash installation depending on whatever the customer needs are. Okay. So delivery and installation has been done. After that, what will you do? What is the next thing? After sales service? Support of a Yeah. Absolutely. Fine. And now you get into another side, which is more of a sales support. After sales support. Right. Okay. So for after sales support, you have these cases here. So whenever a customer has a complaint or he raises a ticket, that gets tracked under the cases. Okay. So cases is the tab where all your customer complaints will be tracked. And the complete life cycle of a case will be tracked under this. The case uh, has got opened and it has got closed. Everything can be tracked under this. All right. Next is solution. <laughs> what is solution? Solution is basically uh, you know the common problems and their solutions. Okay, so this is a table where you can actually track or list down some common problems and the solutions. Why this is important? What do you think this solution table is important? How will it help? 
customer satisfaction for future references yes i mean if the any any of the support guy uh, clears the solution the solution gets stored in the tab so that for the future reference absolutely correct. so the common problems and their solutions uh, will be here for reference by the support people all right let's say you know a common problem is that uh, the monitor goes off in 5 minutes the common problem everyone is you know uh, raising a case regarding this so that can be tracked as a, this is more like a knowledge base okay so your customer support guy can actually uh, instead of uh, raising a case he can you know quickly suggest them that hey, you know what uh, you just need to go and change your setting maybe that's the solution to that okay so that's how it is so the common problems and the solution should be listed here so that your customer support guy can actually suggest them and there is another uh, you know uh, thing uh, you there is a you know option of allowing your end users also to see this solution table okay we'll talk about this later after the little you know, once we have done a bit of uh, topics so that part is the solution uh, table can also be allowed uh, to the end users so that they themselves can find the solution to their problems and they don't bother your customer care that's how it is right and then this table is pretty much you know self explanatory what is this product okay so what what, what do you think we do in the products table it would list on all the products that the all company the would have right all the, the products or the active products as well as inactive products inactive means the products that you might have sold in past and right now you're not mm -hmm. selling them so everything can be listed here yeah so that's it so we have this uh, we have uh, this flow for our sales application and you can uh, you know uh, since we did it with this example you can easily relate it to a normal sales process that any company would follow right and this is a process that you suggested and you saw that it completely got mapped to the what sales force uh, has provided right so more or less uh, most of the companies have the same kind of a process they do advertisement then they track leads then they actually you know start uh, storing information for account contact uh, they track opportunities then there are contracts orders and uh, then there is after sale support so more or less the process is same yeah there can be a few extra tables required let's say uh, you wanted to have uh, one more table here for storing invoices you want to have one more table here for storing uh, the uh, you know shipping information let's say so if that is there you can do that so salesforce allows us to customize things uh, that is but this is the standard sales application and uh, this is how it works all right so i'll uh, just a uh, quick question on this process uh -huh. now uh, when i asked you earlier you know the leads are linked to accounts or orders you know uh -huh. how and, and this is you know, typically in most of the companies they they track you know who referred a particular customer and you probably give them some kind of a discount or or whatever it might be some kind of incentive so mm -hmm. in this in this process where would that fall into so you need for example in this case IBM is one company. company and IBM gave that after that process with IBM was complete they referred a different company maybe let's say asen sure mm -hmm. Is there any way to track in this uh, custom model? Who referred? Who referred? Who who gets that incentive for referring them? Whatever it might be, maybe a discount on a future sale, something of that sort. Okay. Um, we we have you know uh, we do not have any you know uh, direct or straight away method for doing that. Okay. So this standard app has been designed in such a way that it does not allow us to do that by default. but you can as i told you you can customize it so if you have that right. referral kind of a model you can customize and make it there that is right so that's very simple that can be done but uh, sure. you know once we uh, start talking a little about customization you will yourself be able to understand it and figure it out how how it should be done correct okay we'll come to that a little later uh, for sure. today i will just give you a small activity and that's you know something which i want you to do um i want you to you know do at least five examples of going from campaigns 
till solutions or products okay or at least till the orders so basically you know create a campaign then create a couple of leads for that campaign then you know try to create an account contact for the camp from the lead then create opportunity then create the contract order cases solution product okay and all these things uh, i have not created any record for you and i have intentionally not done that because i want you to explore i just don't want you to be completely dependent on the session or whatever we have seen in the session so you just need to go ahead and create understand try and understand what data exactly is going how they are related to each other how they are connected to each other fine so this is you know something which i want you to do uh, you know uh, today after the, this session fine okay so the only thing that uh, you guys will need to do is go ahead check your developer edition working fine or not your sales application looks the same way or not if it looks the same way just you need to enter data so that's your uh, assignment all right and so you, you want to do five different orders or how how when you say five examples i mean five times you just need to go from here till here okay so, you know let's say they use create a campaign and from that campaign you try to create three leads and then you try to convert uh, those leads into accounts and uh, contact and then you know create an opportunity for that and create a contract connected with the account and you will become a complete expert if you can do it five or 10 times from here to here you'll understand which object is connected to which other object and which is very important okay okay all right so all right that's, that's it